A new era dawned on South African motorsport this year as the country's fastest and most powerful saloon car formula, the West Bank Modified Saloon Car Championship, entered its 12th year of bringing top excitement to motorsport fans. Amongst the eight V8s in the lineup for the two 12 lap races in Port Elizabeth was Ben Morganud in his brand new Sasselback car. A win at Kyle Army, pole position here in P, and Morganud was looking his old, relaxed, confident self. What surprises me is that the car is so close to the times we used to do with the uh, last year's West Bank cars. My grid time yesterday was half a second off what it had been in 94 with a, with a full rotor car. Unbelievable, and you make it look so easy around the circuit, it don't actually look like you're trying. Well, the quickest way is always the smoothest way. And uh, when the, the bumping and the barging starts, that's just not smooth <laughs> any longer. <laughs> Morgan Root in the brand new car, just a fraction of a second ahead of coming back to racing, Johan could see in the save at Opel. Class C, Shaul Wilkin is always leading in the Toyota Sprinter. Out of retirement, former West Bank champion, Johan could see how did this all come about? Uh, Roger, actually, Gary had a road accident in his uh, private car, and then he found me the, the following week and asked me if I'd be prepared to drive his car for him. And I've never seen anybody happier driving this car. Man, I was actually delighted about the whole idea, but uh, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I've never driven a V8 before. You know, it's still a saloon car, which is in my blood. I love it. And uh, so far, it's been going very really good. Morgan Rood arrives to take a pole position with a big 5.7 litre Ford engine under his bonnet that provides over 700 horsepower. Alongside him, the spectacular three times West Bank champion, normally found in a Gearmax motor car, Johan could see. And he's in Gary Dunkley's Sabre Opel there on the right hand side as the Hyundai 2 litre Sonata, that's the pace car so familiar to West Bank fans, leads the, this big field around on their pace lap. Oh, I'm very happy. I'm having an absolute ball in this car. It's very rewarding. And I think that for me, that I've got to rather measure by how fast I am this year compared to last year. It's only my second time here, and I'm like three seconds a lap quicker already, and that's what counts. I'm getting there. I'm definitely getting better and better, and I'm going to get there. Willie, a few of the other drivers onto your pace, and you haven't stopped working or trying things out since you've got here. Yes, Roger, when we got here, the first couple of laps we did, we broke the side shaft, and uh, then we went out and tried again, and the car was quick. And from then on, I just went slow. I don't know if I'm overdriving the car, kept changing things and adjusting, and I can't seem to get it onto the pace. Rick Davis pulls the Honda off. We're waiting for the hammer to go down. Morgan Roos fastest across the line, and thousands of horsepower are released onto the circuit. We're in with Willie Hepburn on our way down to Repco Corner and uh, Zoo Bentham trying to go in the inside there of Morgan Root. But Johan could see in that Sabre at Opal, the Gary Dunkley car goes around the outside and forces himself up into second position. We're in with Willie Hepburn. He was only fifth on the grid as they got away from the line. Here's Morgan Root, the brand new Sassel car. And sideways goes could see as they come through Chevs and Fords and Chevs again. There's uh, Dennis Oltoff in his Mustang Ford as we go down the hill into Hangar. We're going flat out to win Peter Lindeberg, holds the steering wheel like the other racing driver as he goes through the brake marks at uh, Hans Hairpin. It's Morgan Root, it's Kutsi. Look at that sliding, that big V8. He's got 650 horses underfoot. Then it's Zubenta, Willie Hepburn who started fifth. He's only up to fourth. Then it's Peter Lindeberg in that Castetna Opel. Going better than he's ever gone, three seconds faster. And he qualified ahead of this man, Willie Hepburn, sideways onto the main straight. And look at Kutsi, spectacular. Hanging onto the Morgan Root car with all those ground effects. Normally as we say, oh, and Roddy Turner, he's not going to do that car much good going off the dirt. It's very, very low. Beautiful sound from this low Calibra with that Chevy V8 motor. As they come into Repco Corner at the end of the straight, it's uh, Peter Gock is also in there in the Auto Coupe and Unicom Opel Cadet. Here's Roddy Turner, much the C-Class car. And what I told you about it, you can only do damage to these motor cars if you go off the circuit, the doors come loose. It's Morgan Root in the front, not too far behind there. He's sliding into view around the Conti SSS. Look at that, just leaving black rubber around the Conti SSS. You hunt could see Zubenta and uh, Hepburn's right on his tail. Willie Hepburn's been racing since 1965, 30 years of experience. He's a South African uh, land speed record holder. He's used to powerful motor cars that go very fast. Zubentam is his first challenge, and then he's got to get off to Kutsi. 
He cannot believe that Kutsi qualified ahead of him in this race. Trying to find a way past Zubeta in that double four. He comes from Paul in the Cape, a very professional team there under Les Johnson. Round Chevy Sweep, as they used to call it, just a sweep now, and across the tunnel and heading for Goodyear Corner. And Morgan Root, once again sideways, just loves this driving oval track experience and drag racing. He's been in all sorts of saloon cars as Morgan Root, and he's lumming it up front. Here's the C-Class car with Roddy Turner coming past. Lovely sound from that motor car. He's going into the pits. His door is loose. He'll have to stop and have it repaired or taken off the car. Whoops. And the pit wall's done it for him. That easy tools Calibra just goes off straight through the pits and back into the race. Here's Willie now looking for space. And Zubentum's left him a gap. As he goes into the Conti S, as Willie's got him, goes through on the inside. He's opened up a car length. And now he's got to set after your hunt could see in that say bad opal. Down they go down the hill and up to Hangar Bend. They don't want to look too much here. The Gestetna Opal of Lindenburg's right on his tail of Zubentam Stone. Here's the Class C leader. This is the 1700cc, that Castrol Minolta sprinter of Charles Wilkins. So often we find it up in the front, but always been tailed by that Audemars car of Dave Repsol. And here's Roddy Turner. He's rejoined the race just behind the C-Class cars. Willie Hepburn has now got shot of Zubentam and Peter Lindenburg. Putting 650 horsepower to work on the road, gets it sideways. Morgan Rood in the front. Johan could see he's starting to close on him. He's got 650 horses underfoot as well. But 720 horsepower from that uh, Roush Ford engine available there to Ben Morgan Rood is making all the difference. What a magnificent shot. Sideways, giving the crowd a thrill. Third position is Willie Hepburn coming up and Graham Yeckles in the ex Duckham uh, Ford Sapphire. There's Hepburn. Lots of experience there. And Zub Bentham is hanging on to him, bringing Peter Lindenberg along with him. There he is, hurrying down the dip before you go right around Hangar Bend. And that's a real frightening corner. The order Mark Toyota's gone to the front of Class C. He's lost Wilkins somewhere around the circuit. Roddy Turner hurrying along. Wilkins, there he is in the uh, Castle Toyota Sprinter. He must have gone off the circuit. He was complaining about brake problems earlier in the day. But in the front, we've got Lindenberg. Looking for uh, Zubentam as they go around Hangar Corner, feed the power. Oh, he goes sideways. It's like driving on ice with all this horsepower underfoot. And he nearly goes into the back of him. He's moved up a place. It's Lindenburg. Thanks very much. He's in fourth. And Zubentam, also complaining about the handling around the left-hand corners, not too happy, has gone back a slot. Morgan Root, here's the two class. He goes Wilkins, passes him on the way to Repco Corner and has gone through into the lead once again. The familiar sight of that car in the front. Zubentam is having it out. He's got the inside berth on the way to Repco. The right hand, he passes Lindenburg. No, he doesn't. Lindenburg's going around the outside, holding his berth there. Pouring it on, going down to Conti Corner. As he goes through, he's got him. Zubentam has moved back into fourth position and is keeping Peter Lindenburg on a high at the moment in fifth. Just listen to that V8 engine at work as he chases off to the horn. Just behind them, Peter Goch hurrying along in the Autocrypt uh, and Unicom. Opel Cadet not having a happy day, not too happy with the circuit at all. This is the first time he's been here. The spectacular could see. He's been out of racing for 18 months. He's lost none of his skill. He's uh, never driven a V8 before, and he's giving everybody a driving lesson and a thrill a minute at the circuit. Wilkin in the front of Class C as Morgan Roots gets into his last lap and sideways comes Kutsi. That's just the nature of man being in oval track racing. Here's Wilkin, not too far behind the Audemars car of Dave Repsol. He'd love to get into a V8 too. He's been looking at these motor cars that are into the last lap. It's going, going to be Morgan Root and still the Gestetna Opel of Lindenburg is chasing off to Zubenta. He's making it all look far too easy as Ben Morgan Root, car built by Ken Gallagher, is handling magnificently. But never giving up, there is Kutsi. Just turning on the power, loving every moment of it. They've lapped these Class C cars. The leading pack of V8s have settled down into the order of Morgan Root Kutsi. The third man, Willie Hepburn, there he is, sliding into view. And behind him, Zubentium on that dark blue, that novel Ford, is keeping a handy fourth position. He gets through the back markers, and still Lindenberg is trying and pressing on just as hard as he knows how. Morgan Rood, three starts and two wins, takes the flag, a very happy man. Ben Ulfirm back in business, it looked almost too easy. Well, this car handles so well, I'm just along for the ride. And uh, I must just thank Ken Gillibrand, he built this car, um, virtually single-handed in my workshop. Um, thank you very much, Ken. Appreciate it. Nice car. We've never seen Morgan Rood happier. He wins it ahead of Johan Kutsi making his comeback. Willie Hepburn in third still leading the points table in the West Bank Modified. Class C went to Shaul Wilkin ahead of Dave Repsold.
as they push the Class A cars and Class B cars, those V8s, back into the pits to get them ready for their second race. It's time now for the Class D cars. These are 1400s, and for the first time in his career, Patrick Seddon is on pole position. As the Hyundai pulls off, he's on pole. He decides to pace across the line. Etienne Roos, the man who leads the points table, is in second position. We go in with Leon Skierpers as these 1400s head for Repco Corner to about 200 k's an hour. It's Seddon in the front in that Beck and Jackson's car, and Etienne Roos goes round the outside of him, and it looks like he's losing it as is Skierpers. Goes right round, you can just see the dust from Etienne Roos. He just went off on his own, and Patrick Seddon is going to be way ahead all on his own. This boy from Queenstown is showing what it's all about. There he is, Brian Maunder from Cape Town, also going well in the golf. And here's Ray Wolford driving the Brian Cook and Cornwright Motors car is lying in third position. He blew his engine up and threw a rod a little early in the day and he's been given this drive by the chairman of the association. There's Etienne Roos. He's arrived there in sixth position. He's got a long way to go. Maunder's in second to Seddon. As they come round Goodyear Corner, then it's Ray Wolford into sight. And Etienne Roos has moved up ahead of Warren Mayer. There he is. He's in that automark Toyota's roof and he's on a charge. Fourth, but Seddon is a long way ahead of him. Almost the length of the straight. Onto the brakes at uh, the Repco corner. Maunder a little bit out of touch with the leader and here comes Ray Wolford. He hadn't got a chance to practice in that car. He's getting the feel of that car and Roos is right on his tail. A very competent driver, a South African karting champion, very much into the racing scene, looking relaxed. But Seddon is going for his first win. He's not going to allow this one to get away from him. He's never won a race against Roos and he wants to do it here today. But Roos is a hard man to beat. He's closing in there in Ray Wolford. Normally driving the race speed car as they come down through the suite. Presses on there, you can see the karting experience starting to tell. He looks for every little gap. You leave him a, a just an opening of a fraction and he's going to get his nose in there and pass him, as he's done now. Moved up into third position. Ahead is Brian Mond in the golf and uh, Patrick Seddon in the Opel Cadet. Long way ahead, it's going to be impossible to catch him here. It's a 12 lap race. Seddon's got his head down. His pit is cheering him on. And he's looking very good indeed round these corners, not getting flustered at all, not losing it. His pit is keeping him well informed. And Roos has not got past Maunder. He's taking a long time to get past this Cape Town driver in that look Repco golf. Car sounds very nice, it's prepared by Roger Taylor of Krugador. Here he goes now, he's on the inside as they go down to the right hand at the end of the straight, past the pits, he's got ahead of him, he's gone into second position with Maunder right on his tail. This is where he lost it on the first lap, all on his own, he wasn't pushed, he didn't fall, he just went off into the dirt, and he's got a nudge there from Maunder and nearly lost it again. Roos, very used to this in karting, certainly able to hand it out and receive it in West Bank Modified Racing. Patrick Seddon, to the happiness of his crew, has won his first race in West Bank 1400cc racing. Ahead of Etienne Roos in the Toyota, Brian Maunder third, Ray Wolford in the Brian Cook car fourth, and Warren Mayer in fifth position. The Algoa Motorsport Club combined all the classes for the second 12 lapper. The winner of the last race takes pole position and then it's the fastest laps that decide the remaining positions on the grid. A little bit different to other forms of motorsport. The fans, of course, have come along to see those big V8s. There's eight of them in this race as well. And this is the frightening view that Johan could see has from the rear of his car when he looks in, in his mirror as this Hyundai slows the field down, allows them to warm their tyres, going that left and right, as everybody by now knows, is to get those tyres good and warm, because if you arrive at Repco Corner at the end of the straight with cold tyres, you're not going to stop. Wait for the hammer to go down. And there it is, big V8 in, in action, the NASCAR engines are at it again. We're going with Peter Lindenberg, that colourful steering wheel on the right-hand side, he's got Willie Hepburn ahead of him, and could see he's pushed to the outside by Hepburn, who started in third position on the grid and Johan is going round the outside sliding. Willie starts to give him a nudge and trying to shoulder him out this way. This is not going to affect, oh look at him pushing him, nearly pushed him off the circuit. This won't affect Could see. He's been into stock car driving and West Bank racing for far too long. As we look back from Could see's car, it's Peter Goff has taken his opportunity and he's doing that all equipped cadet and here it is again from Willie Hepburn's car. He's got that nudge. He lost out in that little fracas there. Morgan Root gets away. There's Could see and Peter Goff in third position. Willie Hepburn puts the foot down, gets it sideways and is chasing after Gok. Through the sweep they go sideways, who bent up a little bit further in the field. He's got Gok in his sights, he comes down the sweep over the tunnel, going for Goodyear corner, late onto the brakes and Willie's moved up a position. He's gone to third and he's bitter in him in this race is Johan Kutsi and he lies ahead of him. 
Then it's Peter Gock. Uh, Peter Lindeberg takes his own line out of the corner, doesn't get a slipstream. There's the Class C cars just behind. It's Morgan who's safely away. But could see has made up some time and starting to get closer to him. Still Gock stays ahead and the Gestetner Opel of Lindenberg has moved ahead of Zubenta. The confident Ben Morgan who still has to look in his mirror to see could see slipping and sliding behind him. Putting on a great shot and Willie Hepburn's got a bit closer to him. Oh, terminal noises from Lindenberg's car as Zubentheim goes through Peter Lindenberg's races run. He split his gearbox and Altoff comes through as well in that Ford Mustang. He's just going to be able to make his way back to the pits. Further back in the field of 1400. He nearly lost it there, did uh, Patrick said. Open the door there for Etienne Roos and that's all he needs. He shoulders his way through in the inside and Roos has gone to the front of the 1400 class and could see closer. He's just trying to fight that power as quick as he can onto the road to get closer to Ben Morgan. The ground effects allowing that uh, that uh, Sassel car to stick to the road and slipping and sliding goes could see. Into Goodyear corner they come, feeding the power as early as they can. The stricken Gestetten Opel is freewheeling to the pits as Morgan Root comes through and could see is a lot closer. Pity that great sportsman then, powerboat racing and West Bank racing is out of this. There's the Class C cars, Sil Wilkin, Repsol and George Bezaino in that Nissan Exchange car. Morgan Root has got could see on his tail and charging. Trying not to slip and slide to get it on straight, but Willie Hepburn is closing on him as well. This is going to be a race to the finish, this one. They're into the traffic. This is going to slow. This is allowed. Could see to get a lot closer. We've seen him in Gear Max cars before, and he's just as spectacular. In the same way, as he goes through the inside. He gets him on the hairpin. That's the sight from the back of his car. Slides it out. He nearly takes the nose off Morgan Root's car. And Jahan could see back in racing after 18 months is ahead of a champion in West Bank racing, and that's Morgan Root. And she's chasing for his worth. He's not taking time to get his. Mind right, he's after him as quick as he can. And look at this for Joy, sideways onto the main straight. And Morgan Root's looking for a way to cut through. He's going to try down the right-hand side. Could see should close the door, he doesn't. Willie Hepburn's watching the show from just not too far behind. And Morgan Root's gone back into the front. Could see his moment of glory, that short-lived moment of glory is over, but still he's in there with a the fight. The car is older, it's not as sophisticated, but he is driving it to the limit and beyond, even through those corners. And he's lost it. He's lost it as he goes through, and Willie Hepburn has got a lot closer. He's trying so hard, he's your hunt could see. We've got to see him in this sort of racing in future, that is for sure. Here's Willie Hepburn now trying to pick his position as he gets in amongst the slow traffic. So the chance could see going in there. Very late, he leaves the braking late. He's feeling it on, watch that car going sideways. All that power getting onto the road, and Hepburn is slipstringing him. He's looking for a place to pass him. Can he do the same as Morgan Root as they go up the start, finish straight? He's closing, he's right under his bootlet. As he goes through on the inside, he's going to do the same thing. Morgan, who did it a lap before, and Hepburn's doing it now as we get into the closing stages of the race. And he's lost it! Could see has lost it. You can see his camera just showing countryside. And Johan could see went off the road. I think he got a nudge there from Willie. And uh, Johan could see has got to spin it back onto the road. And he's losing places all the time. He's gone down into fifth position. Here's Willie now. He's what's off to Ben Morgan as well. And Wilkins! The lead in Class C has lost to the locked his brakes, went off in Goodyear corner, and Dave Bretzold is going to take a well-earned win, provided he holds it all together. The winner of the first race, Wilkins, is going to have to take second best in this one. Ben Morganrud gets his pair of wins for the day, ahead of Willie Hepburn, who goes to the top of the points table in the ECL Opel, and Jürgen Zubentheim third. Class C goes to Dave Repsol in this race, and Class D to Etienne Roos, ahead of Patrick Seven. Willie, what happened at the end of the straight there? Roger, I was uh, sort of staying in touch the whole race and uh, eventually Johan made a mistake and I got up close behind him, got a slipstream off him, went up the inside of him at the end of the straight and he cut the corner on me and I braked as hard as I could to stop it but uh, unfortunately slid into him. But I was still on my half of the circuit so I feel that I didn't do anything wrong. Well, I said I was going to try for the second heat because I tried to save the tyres in the first heat and uh, it worked but uh, <laughs> Ben got passed again you know, through the slow traffic. But I take my hat off to Ben, he's a good driver, so is Willie. Good days racing. <laughs>